Hey, welcome back to the Drive Home Show. It's October. It's October, and we've instantly turned into fall. We, we skipped summer, and we just went right to fall. Um, instantly, I'm talking like, you know, when I, like, last week we were wearing shorts and t-shirts, and now all of a sudden, it's freezing. It just happened all, just, you know, overnight. We had green tree, green leaves on the trees. Now it's all, they're like colored. There's a lot of them yellow, some orange. I have orange hair. They're red. It's just crazy. I watched a video, I watched, I watched it. I watched a video of our previous two 10Ks. The one from, that would be 2016. And then the 2017. And I'm like watching them and I'm like, hey, the, trees are uh, changed leave the tree the tree the leaves are changing color on the trees on the video and like they're not doing that here they're not doing that here and then now they are so it's like instantly and it's cold it's 50 degrees it's damp dreary cool cold like you know you need you need a coat I, I took Tori out with a winter coat this weekend it's freezing <laughs> the ten, uh, 10 case coming up this Saturday hey everybody it's the drive home show it's four Oh nine, she's real fine. My four oh nine, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Four oh nine. I'm just kidding. It's four twelve, but that's the car clock, so it's like four oh eight on the real time clock. Uh, my Fitbit watch. Is, let me tell you, uh, four oh nine on my Fitbit watch. Four. She's real fine on my Fitbit watch. My four oh nine, four oh nine. She's real fine. My four oh nine, giddy up, giddy up. Four oh nine. Got my hair cut today in preparation for the race. The lady kind of jacked it up. Um, she did. The, she cut it according to the specifications, but then she's like combing it back, combing it all back. It's like I don't know what that was all about. But I did not come in with a haircut combed back, and then she's like, "Would you like some gel or any product or any gel or anything or product or gel?" And I'm like, "Okay, I'll, yeah, let's have some gel. I got some some grape jelly." And, uh, and then she like slicks it all back. I get, I get those little streak lines where the bald spot, like, you know, you're going bald and it's like, there's not enough hair to cover everything. And they're like, what the hell are you doing? So then I try to like uns, unstyle it or kind of spike it up and it's just kind of all jacked up right now. But I also do it my, I shall style it my own self tomorrow and hopefully it'll be more, more nicer. I got the heat seaters, the seat heaters on. It's cold. I mean, it's 5:49, but it's just cold. It's that it's just the cold in the air, the chill in the air. It's not like it's not like warm and just you know. What the heck are you doing? It's just chill. <clears throat> I'm gonna run today. Let me tell you about the running stuff. Cause we've got the 10K coming up. Touch tone, press tone, 10K. Uh, I'm trying to. Look at my let me get my yawning out of the way. I'm trying to look at the side mirrors so I can get in the leftmost lane. We're crossing over 94 right now, so from henceforth we should be on 694 and not 494. That's a lot of nines and fours. Putting Okay, now we're finally moving into the leftmost lane. The car in front of me has a two, has a three fourths chance of being expired. It's, they got the. 2018 stickers, the blue ones, and because three fourths of the year is over, they have a three fourths of a chance of being inspired. So, anyway, did you hear that song we started off the show with? This is it love or whatever? It's by Mr. Mister. It's like the third time I, I swear they play these songs in clusters. It's like the third time I heard that song in the past week, and I've never heard it before on this station previously. And I just hear it three times in one week. Same kind of thing with um, uh, some kind of 70s song. Uh, I can't remember what it is now, but it was like Three Dog Night and Three Soul Cry song. Anyways, let's get on to this topic. The baseball season is over. We got so much to talk to you about here. Baseball season is over. Uh, Twins finished in second place with the final uh, record of 78 wins and 84 losses. Does that add up to 162? Uh, if 
well, they won their last six games of the year, but before you go and say, oh, that's pretty good, it was against the Tigers and the White Sox, for crying out loud. Uh, Joe Maurer might be done with baseball. He did, uh, it's the last year of his contract, his big major, huge contract, remember, it's like seven years, 240 million or something. At 140 million. Anyway, he hasn't decided if he's going to retire or not, but his last game he played, he played first base. He went one for four. His last at bat was a double. He hustled out a double. Slid in safely. And then, like, every time he came up to bat, he got a standing ovation, and then he would, like, tip his hat to the crowd and whatever. Then they gave him a standing ovation for hitting a double. And then he put his put his hand on his heart, thank you, patted his hand on his heart, thank you, waved to the crowd, and then in the ninth inning, they're winning five to four, and he comes out to catch. So he's not a catcher anymore, he was first baseman, said he hasn't caught since 2013. So he put on the catching gear, came out, caught one pitch, and then left the game. It was kind of for his father. So it kind of, kind of leads you to believe he's done. But he didn't say he's done. He said he's got to think about it before making his decision. You don't want to make it hastily. He's not under contract, though, so he would have to sign a new contract. But uh, I think he finishes the season with a 282 average. Not, not shabby, not great. Six home runs. He did hit a grand slam this year. So he would, you know, could go out with a base hit in his last at bat. But he probably can still play another couple of years and be productive. So it's up to him. It's totally up to him. I don't really see the Twins doing anything next year. They've got some few, few talented players. But no, nothing really spectacular. No, no Kirby Puckett's, no Rod Cruz, no Lyman Bostocks. So, we'll see. Um, Vikings, you know, they lost. They didn't play yesterday. They played Thursday. I did a whole spiel about the Vikings, so we don't have to go back into that. The football, NFL football, we're on the Pine Springs Modern I curve by the way. It's 420 on the drive home clock, car clock. Football, NFL was like really crazy yesterday. It's like... I don't know if they were even matches, but I got a lot of my picks wrong. And like, just say for example, okay, Tampa Bay, right? Tampa Bay beat their first opponent handily. I can't remember who it was, but it was like 58 to three or something. Then they came back and they beat the Philadelphia Eagles, the Super Bowl champions, um, handily. This Fitzpatrick quarterback, he's like the backup quarterback. They're like, oh, the Bucks are going to be pretty special this year. So then they play the Bears. So I picked the Bucks, and the Bears like trounce them 48 to 3, or 40, I think it's 48 to 10. And Mitch Trubinsky throws six touchdown passes. So it's something like that. You're like, oh, yeah, easy win for the Buc Tampa Bay Bucks, and then they get clobbered. Well, then, like, the, the Buffalo Bills, they beat the Vikings 27-6 to six or whatever the score was. And then, uh, they, oh, they showed a pretty good defense against the Vikings. They looked, they made the Vikings look pretty bad. And I'm like, now the Buffalo Bills go play the Packers. Well, they should be able to handle the Packers, too. So I picked the Bills. And then uh, the Packers beat them 22 to nothing. I'm like, the, hey, what does you survive? Then uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, well, I picked the Tennessee Titans to beat the Philadelphia Eagles, and they did. But it was close. They went in overtime. Uh, the Eagles kicked a field goal in overtime, but then they, they had to let the Tennessee Titans have the ball. And then Tennessee went down and scored a touchdown to win it. So I got that pick right. But I, I'm thinking most teams didn't pick the Tennessee Titans. Uh, what else is there? Lions almost beat the 
Cowboys, but the Cowboys won it on a, a last second field goal. I didn't actually hear the game, the Cleveland game. I gotta look that score up. Cleveland is playing the Oakland Raiders. Cleveland had their number one pick um, quarterback, Vic Tabak or something like that. Um, he came in and won the game last week for the Browns in a, you know, star fashion. So I was like, oh, he's getting his first start. <coughs> the Browns, I'm gonna pick the Browns to win. And then the Browns were losing. And then they came back and tied it. That one went to overtime. I didn't hear how that one ended. <coughs> and I didn't look up the scores this morning. So it's just a crazy week in football. All the football games and scores and such. I got a lot of picks wrong. Running, we got running coming up this weekend. Here's what we did. This here's what we did this past weekend. We went to get. I'm not not gonna buy new shoes for the run. We still have our same shoes from last year. But one thing I did get, I got these Arch Supports inserts for Paulita. Went to Dick's Sporting Goods, got Arch Support inserts, and it made a world of difference as far as comfort. Paulita and so hopefully that will give her the extra edge she needs for the race on Saturday also I got her um, Under Armour short compression shorts type of deal um, I, I have a pair I actually bought a me a new pair just because I was real Under Armour I think I'm going to try them out so today, if I run today, it's 48 degrees today. It's kind of gloomy. It's been raining all day, but I think the rain has stopped. So anyway, I gotta get. I'll get to that part. So we got the compression shorts and a little phone, cell phone type holder. It's kind of like a fanny pack, but it's it's not a loose fitting fanny pack. It bounces all around and everything. It's it's a tight fitting fanny pack that holds the holds the phone firmly in place. On your waist. So hopefully that those three things will help. Uh, we also got furniture. Yeah, this is the day we went and got furniture. Um, we're looking for redoing the kitchen kind of the dining room area because there's a fireplace in the dining room area. We're like we're not utilizing the fireplace well enough. Um, kind of wanted to make it into like a reading area with maybe a lamp and a couple of chairs and a end table and kind of do that. And um, so the tables, we were thinking like two square tables, making them taller tables, like countertop height tables. And um, that way you could put table over here, table over there, and then when we actually eat a formal dinner, bring the two tables together, it's such a slight day, Iraq and such as. It's 427, we're coming down, we just passed Rice Street, we're coming up to our sign pretty soon here, that's going to tell us how far it is to 35W, we're on, running pretty smoothly for right now, hopefully that's not too bad. Um, so we go to the furniture store and we look and we find actually find a table that doesn't split off into two, but it's it opens up, it has the leaf like inside of it, so you can... As it sits, it's a small table, but then you can pull it out for to seat six people for like like a dining room table. So we went with that. We got six chairs. Then we were looking for a freeway time thirty five W six minutes. I, was, I almost thought it was four. I almost thought it was four, but it's six. So we're gonna be slowing down. We're gonna probably go all the way to University Avenue today. We gotta go to the store. We gotta get milk. Probably orange juice we gotta get dog food for Tori the Torster gotta get chicken for dinner it's winter winter chicken dinner oh, I must have got a text or something because my phone just lit up 18 minutes we're only we're only 18 minutes into the drive home show that's pretty good I would think they end up usually, usually being almost an hour long we're only 18 minutes into the drive home show that's crazy longest part is all this slowing up ahead here so we also wanted to get like a mattress for Paula's room, 
we were thinking a full mattress. Now I kind of wish I would go on Highway 10 because Highway 10 is like nice and easy, nice and free flowing. But we're stopping here before Snelling, like we always do. This is 4:30 right now. Was it? We'll just we'll just say it was 4:28 when I went by the sign. So we'll see if we can get there by 4:34. Six minutes. They told us six minutes. Um, we're looking for a full mattress type deal for Paula's room. We're going to redo that and make it like a guest room, but then obviously it's going to be Paula staying there. Um, so we went to look at mattresses and beds and mattresses and beds. And, um, ended up, the guy kind of talked us into it, but it makes sense um, getting, a, our, getting ourselves a new bed and using the, our old bed in the guest room. Um, and we were really kind of sold on the, the adjustable, there's an adjustable frame type bed that raise your legs and your head up. And the way he described it, the way he described it was, it's kind of like you're floating, you're zero gravity or whatever. It kind of like feels like you're floating. And it's like, yeah, it does. And it felt really nice. And so, and I had been thinking about getting Paulina a bed. I was, I was thinking about getting her the sleep number bed, but you know, we just not, not really pleased with the sleep number bed the way it is. And this would be a lot cheaper than the sleep number bed. So we just decided, yeah, let's just go for it. So we're getting a new bed and a new table on Friday. So that's what, that's what it is. The run. Okay, let's talk about the run. We're in. We're in. Um, we're in training for the 10K. So Friday, Jerry had a doctor's appointment, follow-up doctor's appointment. Then I ran after that. So I I wanted to do the 6.2 miles. I wanted to have a record showing that I could do it in under an hour. Well, actually, I'd run it under like 54 minutes um, previously. And I wanted to actually, and that was, that ended up being like 6.8 mile per hour average. And I wanted to prove that I could do it faster than that even. And uh, so I did it Friday. It was a total of 53 minutes, under 53 minutes. It's like 52 minutes and 58 seconds. Just barely under 53 minutes. Um, which I, I still think I could do better than that even. But it ended up being like 7.02 miles per hour average. Just barely over seven. But it's for the entire 6.2 miles I averaged over seven. So that's pretty good. Okay, we're, we're, fleet, we're driving much more fast. We're still in that straightaway. There's a semi truck that's trying to speed up and not let me ahead of him. I gotta get in front of him, so, okay. All right, I made it. Okay, it's 434 now. Just about to cross over. It's uh, 35W, just about to cross. We did it, we did it in six minutes. Great job, everybody. Now we're gonna probably stay here to get all the things that we have, all the things that we've got to get at the grocery store. We wanna go to our regular Fridley grocery store, not, not the, New Brighton Cup, and right now the traffic is going pretty well, so no complaints here. No complaints yet. So the run, yeah, the run I did Friday was 7.02 miles per hour average, but it was for the entire six mile, so that was pretty good. Today my plan is, I plan to do it again today, 6.2 miles. Um, it's cold, it's 50 degrees, it's windy, it's blustery. But we're just gonna do it to strengthen our legs because our legs felt really tired Friday. Um, if I could remember the splits, it was 7.1. No, I can't remember, but the first three were definitely over seven. Four was like 6.98. Five was 
six was like six point eight something. So I would like I don't really care what the time. I'm just doing it today for the endurance part of it, building up the strength, strengthening up the muscles, getting you used, getting my body used to that running for that amount of time. And then um, I'm thinking Tuesday tomorrow we'll probably do three miles. Wednesday I'll probably rest. Thursday I'll just do like two miles. Friday I'll rest. Then Saturday will be the race. So this today will be the long run. Then we won't have a long run. We have a medium sized run tomorrow and then a short run Thursday. Then rest Friday. That's the plan for me. I think Steve has a similar plan. <laughs> I feel kind of anxious now. I don't know why. But the forecast for Saturday, we're still a ways out yet, but it's looking okay. 43 to low, 53 to high. Um, it's been switching off between partly sunny and partly and mostly cloudy. There was one day where it showed rain, but then it turned into something else. So like the rain, there's supposed to be rain all week this week, but I think Saturday we're, we're we don't want it to rain. That's the main thing. We don't want rain running into rain. So so far the rain has stayed off the forecast for Saturday. Now if you follow this, if you listen to this drive home show and you listened to back in June when we wanted to go to the Twins game and how it said it was not going to rain, it ended up pouring, not pouring, but it ended up raining steady for four hours during the time. The baseball game was supposed to be on and it said it wasn't going to rain. So we don't want the repeat of that, but it's looking okay. The forecast part is looking good. <clears throat> We're almost to the store. It's great. It's great. It's 4.39 on the drive home clock. Getting off on University. It's one of our better drive home shows. Did I tell you I got my hair cut today? Yeah, I did. Didn't I? It's kind of jacked up. Nice. We last week I've been running. It was running. It's like 52, 53s and stuff, and that was fine. It's just that it's cold. It's downright cold. You know, like almost had to turn the furnace on. It's inside the house it was like 65. So I'm like, I don't want to turn the furnace on already. It's, it wasn't even October yet. Now it's October 1st. And so we turned on the fireplace, the gas fireplace. Nine minutes for the drive home show. It's pretty great. <laughs> Today I watched the 1985 Bye, bye, bye. All stars, all stars, their gang, 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 gang. Between, between, between. Minnesota Tops, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. And, 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 and. Simpsons, No, the all star game is between the American League and the National League, dummy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I forgot, forgot. That, that, that. So the, guess who the Twins representative was? on the 1985 All-Star Game. The significance of that, if you know, was that it was played in the Metrodome, the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. Um, there were not too many bad things said about it. Um, and that particular game, there were not too many things bad said about it. But in the 87 World Series, there were a lot more bad things said about it. How you lose the ball in, in the roof. Um, it bounces all over the place. Um, air conditioning blows the ball out. I don't know. There was a lot of things bad said. But this particular announcement, announcing crew, was Vin Scully. Joe Gargiola, that's my Joe Gargiola, and Bob Custis. 
Bob Costas was the pregame host of your show from the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Vin Scully was the play by play announcer. And Joe Curiciola, I, I gotta tell you, that he was a commentator, the color man. He's got a real good voice, but I, I just can't, I, I can't do an impression of it. It's more of like an attitude than the actual voice. But, it, um, it was a good game. Well, actually, I don't know how kind of a good game it was. The Twins representative was Tom Brunanski. Um, but the thing that I thought was kind of cool, and somebody mentioned this in the comments section after, I thought of it on my own. Totally on my own, I thought of it. But he mentioned it in the comments section, and I actually put a Facebook post about it. So all these, all these, all these athletes, all these baseball players were on the field. Jack Morris, Burt Blyleben, Paul Molitor, Dave Winfield, Gary Ward, And Harmon Kilbrew, well, actually, he didn't. You know, the other three, the other people I mentioned, were actual All-Star game participants. Harmon Kilbrew was an honorary captain. He was in uniform, but they are all Minnesota former Minnesota Twins. At the time, they were not former Minnesota Twins. At the time, they were yet to be twins, like Molitor. Morris and Winfield, they all came and played in Minnesota after that game. Burt Blyleven also came and played in Minnesota after that game, but he was a Minnesota Twin before that game. Gary Ward was a Minnesota Twin before that game. So Minnesota was represented very well. And also Pete Rolls was a National League representative. And he got the first hit in the Metrodome. And he was my favorite player as a child, so I'm just going to include him in there. The only guy missing was Rod Carew who was in his final season. I don't know what kind of year he was having, but he did not make the All-Star game. Um, and Kirby Puckett, I believe, was his second-year player. He did not make it to the All-Star team. But um, that's about it. Thanks for listening to the Drive Home Show. Keep your feet in the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Don't forget to drive home safe. Thank you, everybody.